I'd like to welcome you all back to the IE427 garage. Today's video is going to be all car related, so please stay tuned. However, just because it's car related doesn't mean everything's going to be concentrated on one of these. We had uh, some issues the last couple of weeks with some critters. And I'm going to give you guys some tips. It happens to the best of us. But I'm going to give you guys some tips on how to keep them out of your structure. How to identify where they may be coming in if, if you have, uh, have critters. And what to do about getting them out. Alright guys, I'm going to start in the shop this morning and we are going to get to Jim's car. We, uh, we're going to get that oil pan in today if it kills us. Um, but I want to start with your shop. I want to start talking about um, mice, rats, rodents, even insects and how to keep them out of your shop space or your garage. Um, because I've been a little lax lately, and because of that, it cost me some time. It cost me a bunch of aggravation, as you're going to see a little bit uh, later as we uh, wander down to the other shop. And uh, I just want to make sure that uh, I help you to do everything you can to keep all these critters out of your shop space, out of your garage, even out of your home. So I'm going to walk back here first. And we're going to open up Ellie. I'm going to I'm going to give you some simple tips. With Ellie, I'm not too concerned. There's nothing in Ellie that the critters can you know eat. The biggest problem there is they they get in the car, and then they start to pack stuff in there. So they bring the fruit nuts, they bring uh, twigs, leaves, and all kinds of other stuff in order to make bedding material. And eventually, they're going to start crapping in there, and they're going to make it stink. And that's that's what sucks, especially if your car has an interior, like a headliner, carpet, stuff like that. If your project has those things in it and you can't keep the critters out, it's going to stink. So the pool filter's running behind the shop, but we're going to work our way through this. So inside Ellie, you can see I get critters. And the reason I get critters is because there's a gaping hole in the floor of Ellie there. And in the firewall over here where I took the steering shaft out. And so they just make their way in. Even in the back, it's a little harder for them to get in there because there's nothing for them to perch themselves up on. But the tail lights are out, the fuel filler cap is out, and so it's not too hard for them to get in here. But as you can see, they bring in that, that's a Gatorade wrapper from the outside of a Gatorade bottle. You know, all of these fruit nuts are from the tree from the neighbor behind us. So you know, they get in here and they make, you know, bedding material so they can sleep. They're a little bit less active here in the summertime, which it's summertime now, um, than they are in the winter because they're looking for a place out of the wind and out of the weather to, uh, you know, bed down. And um, I generally get out here once a month and I vacuum all this crap out and get it clean. And you can see I haven't done that lately. So I've got to get back out here. I've got to clean it. Now, one thing you can do to combat this is you can go to your local sign shop and most sign shops make magnetic signs for the doors of work trucks I know this because of course I have numerous work trucks sorry about the the dark anyways they will sell you that material it's a it's a thin magnetic uh it's not a fabric it's almost like a, a, a like a rubberized material and you can take that and you can cut it with scissors and you can magnetically stick that over those parts of your project where the critters are getting in now it may not keep every critter out but it's going to act as a deterrent because they're going to see that there's no way in the other thing you can do to your shop is look for all of the easy places for them to get in. Just walk around the perimeter. Now, the shop happens to be on a concrete slab, which makes it 
way easier than anything with a raised foundation like your, you know some of your houses back east but areas like this where your air conditioning refrigeration lines go through the wall those need to be sealed they need to be sealed as tight as they can now this has plywood on the outside structure of the shop and then it has the vinyl siding so there's two layers of protection now not only that this it's a roof jack that those lines come through was put on from the inside out so the hole is cut on the inside of the plywood and that roof jack is is nailed or screwed to the inside of the plywood so other than that area around the refrigeration lines there's no place for them to get in other places you're going to want to look are the areas that are around any of your plumbing pen penetration so like if you've got a water line a gas line an electric line a condensate line coming through the wall make sure those are sealed up and that goes for both the rodents and insects insects are a little bit harder to combat because like ants are so small they can travel through a crack in a foundation wall so your best bet there is to find those areas where they they're getting in and it may take some time you may have to search not only from the inside of your house from but, but from the outside as well to identify where they're coming in and those are the areas that you're going to want to treat the foundation for ants and insects so what i'm going to do now that i've kind of shown you that um we're going to hop in the uh the work van and we're going to head down to the other shop and I'm going to show you some of the damage, or actually, the repaired, <laughs> the repaired areas that uh, some of the rodents have uh, have caused, both on one of the work trucks, and on Slytherin, and on the wife's hot rod. Of course these are the things you can't uh, predict when you want to do something like this and you don't have uh, oh control over the environment you got airplanes flying over you you've got uh, people raking next door <laughs> using power equipment anyways so what we had I don't know if you guys saw that as as we walked in but in the last video and I'll link that video in the description of this one all of this area in the back of the other shop used to all just be dirt and so in the winter time we would have you know green grass or weeds growing in here and uh, in the summertime it'll all dry up and uh, then we would have something similar to what we have now however now what we've decided to do is lay down road base and so we put about 20 tons of road base here in the back and uh, I think it's going to make everything a lot easier going forward. It's something we wanted to do for a long time, but we just kind of put it off. So here's the issue that I had. Now, the blue work truck parks here during the week. You guys will see it in some of the videos, but generally it's just uh, at the shop. So what I had was some critters had gotten in underneath this cover as it was parked here outside 
and underneath here is the coolant temperature sensor and so about three weeks or so ago I noticed that the engine light had come on and the truck was due for an oil change anyways and this this truck's kind of finicky and that if you run that uh, not the oil if you run the fuel down to a certain level not only does the fuel light come on but then the engine light comes on as well to let you know that it's low on fuel which makes no sense to me um, so I just thought I'd run the fuel a little low and the, the light had come on so I put fuel in the tank and figured you know in usually in about 30 miles or so the light turns off it didn't turn off and so I investigated a little deeper put the scanner on it and it said that the coolant temperature sensor was reading low so I thought well that's the sensor has just gone bad well on these particular vehicles when the coolant temperature sen sensor isn't reading properly the truck runs way rich and so you could smell fuel and um, so I ordered a new sensor and I figured I've got an oil change coming up and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the oil I'm gonna change the sensor and everything should be good so I went about my business and if you follow us on Facebook you'll see that uh, I kind of put some reference to this in pictures um, probably two weeks ago something like that maybe three and uh, said you know it had turned into a lot more work than uh, I had originally intended and that was true so I did the oil change first all was good started the truck back up truck ran reasonably well but still rich and so I figured well before I get the coolant too hot I will change this temperature sensor out and I pulled that cover off and underneath that cover all of the wires from the temperature sensor to the point at which it went under the um, intake manifold were chewed back so about 10 inches of wire was chewed through it was just bare copper wire from the sensor all the way back to that point point. and I was like oh god now what so it was already about four or five o'clock in the afternoon. I had waited, and waited until it had cooled off and, and decided, you know, I'm just going to tackle this now and get it done. And so I did. I snipped the wires. I found the appropriate color wires to use, which in this case I think were yellow and green, and um, soldered, heat shrunk, and then put some new split loom over the top of the wires. But it was definitely critters. All the evidence was there. The insulation, most of the insulation that had been chewed, had blown away when I drove the truck but you could tell there were chew marks in the insulation that was still stuck to the wire another airplane we're right by the airport um, so I figured well it's because it's been sitting here and I just figured well the truck sits outside uh, along with the van and along with one of our other work trucks and so uh, I checked both of those and none of them had shown evidence but I drive the van a lot more than I drive the Blue Ranger so it's fixed it's running you know just fine it took a while for the computer to kind of like learn its thing but it's running fine now and um, this brings me back to the road base so we had put this road base in and you're gonna have to excuse the cats we've got three feral cats here that like to uh, eat the food that we put out for them when we put the road base in as they were spreading it the tractor got caught under this portion of the metal building you can see right here where, my, where I'm pointing it's all dented up now that portion down there had been pulled away. The, the scoop on the, on the bobcat had actually hooked it and it had pulled away. So there was a gaping hole in the bottom of here. And uh, I thought, well, I'll address that. I've got some of this material left over from when we put the building up. And so I just figured, well, I'll get to that. And when I do, um, you know, no big deal. I'll just cut a patch, you know, about a foot and I'll put it in there or screw it in and it'll seal that up. Well, the road base went in three or four months ago. And uh, what do they say? Rust never sleeps? Well, rats never sleep either, right? Rats, mice, rodents of any kind, they don't, you know, I mean, they sleep, but they're always on the lookout for a, a place to bed down and a place where they can find food. And they found a, a, that opening and they got in. And uh, I'm gonna grab my keys and I'll take you guys inside and I'll show you um, the evidence and some of the damage that they've done. All right, so over here in that same area, you can see I put another couple of screws in there. I actually took a sledge, sledgehammer, about an eight pound sledgehammer, and I banged all that stuff back flat on the outside, um, even to the point where I took the ridges off 
of the two areas where you see the tape. I didn't put the tape there. Um, the wife decided that the tape was going to keep <laughs> out the mice or the rodents, which uh, I know damn well will not. But uh, the big thing is to get the um, open area as small as possible. And, uh, you know, we don't see footprints or anything here. However, I'm pretty confident this is where they were getting in because there was just a gaping hole over here. So we ran a couple of extra screws in after, after you know, pounding everything flat on the outside. I will still cut that patch that I talked about to make it look a little nicer rather, rather than just having it, you know, beat flat with the, uh, the sludge hammer. But um, this is going to keep them from coming in anymore. And so there are still spot over here where I think I could address smaller critters getting in in the shop and that is around the um, the main water pipe over here you can see there's uh, a, a, a sizable gap I mean we could, you know a, a, a small mouse you know if they say if uh, they can fit their head through they can fit their whole body through so usually the size of a dime or a nickel is what you want to make sure it's smaller than and so I'm probably going to take some steel wool and I'm going to stuff some steel wool in there and uh, I may even cut another patch of this material, like I said, I have some extra, and see if I can't get that, that uh, area around that hole a little bit smaller. That pipe can actually come out. We, we, when we built the building, we thought about putting a sink over here, and so I brought the water pipe in, but we've never used it, it's just capped off. So I could take that, that little stub of it off and then uh, just seal it closed, and that would eliminate any critters coming in, in here at all. Um, over here, the first evidence I saw of critters, and this is selfish because I, I immediately went to Slytherin first because my fear was that uh, the little bastard got into the wiring on this thing, and this thing has a lot of wiring. Um, but the first evidence I saw were the footprints on top of the manifold. I don't know if those are showing up. So there's a footprint there. There's a footprint there. So there was something under the hood of the car. Now I went through all of the areas underneath the manifold. I looked the best I could at all the injector clips, the wiring. I do not see any evidence that the little bastard was under here other than the footprints. But you can see the amount of wiring. I mean, we've got the fan control over there. There's the uh, ABS pump down there. All of that stuff has wiring going into it. And uh, I don't want to rewire the car if I don't have to. So Slytherin's good. Now, the wife's hot rod, different story. The wife has a uh, 2005 Dodge Magnum. And uh, it's, it's, we store it here because there's just not room enough in the shop at home anymore. And uh, we take this when we want to go to Vegas or we want to do trips. So it doesn't have a whole lot of miles. I think this thing only has like 30,000 original miles on it. Um, and I'd like to keep it nice and clean. But uh, lately it's seen a little neglect because uh, we, we haven't, what do they say, out of sight, out of mind? So it hasn't been at the shop at home, and so when you don't see it, you tend to ignore it. So with the cover off the engine, I found all of this. That is a rat's nest, a true rat's nest. And we can see evidence of it all the way over here and back there. I didn't find anything on this side, but... Um, and I don't see any wires chewed, which is a good sign. What the little bastard had done is he took the um, foam insulation on the underside of the cover, and you can see it's all eaten away. This used to come all the way around here in a circle, and it was all glued on right here. So all this foam right here, that little mouse or rat or whatever it was, it was pretty good size, whatever it was, because you can see the footprints are pretty big. Ate all of that and deposited it in a big chunk that I pulled off the intake manifold yesterday. So that's this. And uh, so I'm hoping that we got 
their exit and entrance into the shop down here. I can put that back later. I'm hoping that we got their entrance into this building sealed off because uh, I don't want to keep having to deal with this. I'm going to monitor this. So I'm actually going to take the vac. I'm going to vacuum all that stuff up so that I can tell if more of it's been eaten. I'm going to wipe off the top of the intake manifold on Slytherin. Um, I think it, this has given me a little bit more urgency on getting Slytherin brought back to the shop at home. Um, I'd love to bring the wife's hot rod home too, but I just don't have any room to store it there. So I'm going to have to just be diligent on checking to make sure that we're, we don't have any more issues down here. Um, I did make a walk around the entire building. We, bu we built the building and, th and there is no other means for them to get in. Um, we have had birds get in here when the door's been open and those are always fun to get out because they fly in and then they never can seem to find the way to fly out. <laughs> So, so that's always fun. That's why we keep the door down most of the time. But um, every other spot, there, there are no other spots around the building. The building metal comes right down to the foundation and the foundation is stepped. So there's, a, there's a, uh, an area that they just can't get under. They can't climb in, in through the bottom. So that was it. And I know that was it. So I've got it taken care of. Um, I've got to go and I've got to go pick up a battery for Jim's car. We, uh, we found out that the uh, excess power battery, even though it's listed as a group 51, it is bigger. It is five and three eighths inch wide at the base and it is nine and a quarter inches wide. And I went to slide it in and it will not slide in to the breeze tray. So it's going back and we are going to pick up one of our old standby type um, batteries at the battery shop today. I'm on my way there now. I've got to take a couple of uh, power sport and security batteries that we have laying around the shop that need to be recycled with me. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to film there or not, but we'll see. I may, you know, when I stop, I may show you the outside of the building. And then uh, we'll be back at the shop working on the oil pan on Jim's car. So. I didn't want to let this go um, and not talk about this because I know this is a problem that a lot of people have. If they can get their head through the hole, they can get the rest of their body in. And those are words that you really need to understand. We've seen evidence of that at our house. Our house was built in 1890, which uh, for a California home is very old. Uh, the shop is much newer at the house. Um, it's only about 23 years old. but. Um, the house is on a raised foundation and there are plenty of places for them to get in and it's taken us years to find all those little places where the, those little guys get in and cause havoc and they always seem to be uh, running around your attic or in your basement about two in the morning and they wake up the dogs and the house is in turmoil until they quiet down so we've become very good at identifying the spots where they get in um, being a contractor and knowing how houses are built helps us quite a bit as well but Again, I just hope some of this helps you guys in your situation, in your home shops or your home garage to identify where these rodents are getting in and how to keep them out. Um, we've got three feral cats here. You would have thought that they would have caught them and they wouldn't be living under the hood of my, uh, my ranger, but you know, it happens. There's nothing I can do to the cars that we store outside. They are, you know, what they are, so anyways. I'm gonna get all this stuff here closed up and I'm gonna head down to the battery shop. That guy's gotta eat, right? All right, everybody, we're here. Batteries unlimited. All right, we're back on our way to the shop at home and we're about, uh, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes away. So I'll catch back up with all of you in about uh, 20 minutes or so. funny guys road was closed so I had took a detour and I, I just happened to go by the school that I went to uh, kindergarten for pretty cool all right guys we're back at the shop 
I'll get uh, the battery unloaded and uh, brought into the shop and uh, we'll talk about it. It's what I do. All right, music update. Fleetwood Mac, Sugar Daddy. Um, here's the battery we got. We ended up getting a DECA. And I went back and forth with Josh over at Battery Sales Unlimited in Glendora. This is the place I buy nearly all my batteries. I mean, if, if it doesn't have to be like a specialty battery, like the excess power battery that we initially ordered, these are the guys I go to. Um, and they did not have this in stock. We had to order this. And then DECA showed it being back ordered. And somehow, some way, Josh found one in another local warehouse that uh, he was able to pull from. This one ends up having um, 500 cold cranking amps. That's at zero degrees. So at 32 degrees, I believe it actually has 650 cranking amps, if I read the specs right, online. So this is the one we're going with on Jim's car. If you remember, Jim's car has a gear reduction starter. So that actually works in our favor because with a gear reduction starter, it doesn't put as much strain on the electrical system in the car that it would if it was a traditional Ford starter with the separate solenoid mounted on the firewall. This one does have a solenoid mounted on the firewall, but it also has one on the mini starter as well. So we're working on that. All right, so I think that's gonna wrap things up on the battery spectrum of things. We'll get this battery put in probably in the next day or two, and um, we'll finish up some of the other stuff we've got uh, going on the car. The oil pan, the uh, sensors that we're waiting on, and some other things. And then uh, hopefully get far enough along with this car that we can get it started and moved on its own. And uh, get some of the other nitpicky little things taken care of on it. And then uh, move on to working on some of the stuff on the 25th anniversary car. So I want to thank you guys all for watching. If you are enjoying the content, please do the like the share, the subscribe, all that stuff. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.